Good morning. My name is Daniel Zoller. I'm the Charter Organization Representative for Troop 202 and PAC 202 that meet here at St. Francis United Methodist Church. I'm also an Eagle Scout, class of 1990, and I'm the son of St. Francis United Methodist members, Diane and Larry Zoller. Hi, my name is Jack Zoller, and I'm one of Troop 202's Assistant Senior Patrol Leaders. I'm currently star rank, and when I'm not helping out with Boy Scouts, I help out right here at the church. I'll help out with the community garden with my grandfather, Larry Zoller. Today is Scout Sunday, the day we recognize the contributions of young people and adults that help with scouting. We, rec we thank our charter organization rep, St. Francis and I Methodist Church, for supporting various scouting organizations, such as Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, and PAC Scouts that meet here at, Troop at United Methodist Church. We are glad that you are here, and we welcome you to the service of worship. Please join me in our opening prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, you call us to follow Christ and spread the good news of your love for all people. Help us to become all things to all people that we might reach many with your good news. Amen. Okay. <laughs> What has been told from the beginning? Your word, that is, the foundation of the world. Amen. 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 This reading comes from Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 21 through 31. Have you not heard? Have you not known? Has it not been told to you from the beginning? 
Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain, and spreads them to live like a tent to live in, who bring, brings princes to naught, and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth, when he blows upon them, and they wither, and their tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me, or who is my equal? says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see. Who created these? Who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name? Because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will, be, will fall exhausted. For those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The second reading comes from 1 Corinthians, chapter 9, verses 16 through 23. If I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting, for an obligation is laid on me, and woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For, I do this of my, for if I do this of my own will, I have a reward. But if not of my own will, I am entrusted with a commission. What then is my reward? Just this that in my proclamation I may make the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so that I might win more of them. To the Jews I became as a Jew, in order to win the Jews. To those under the law I became as one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, though I am not free, to, free of God's law, but am under Christ's law, so that I might win those outside the law. To the weak I became weak, so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, so that I might by all means save some. I do it for the sake of the gospel, so that I may share, share in its blessings. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Today's Gospel reading comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 29 through 39. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. Jesus came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door, and he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons, and he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found Jesus, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Last week, Jesus was casting out demons in the synagogue. In today's gospel reading, Jesus is healing in someone's house and casting out demons. And then, as Jesus does, he retreats to a deserted place. When Jesus hears everyone is looking for him, 
he makes a hasty departure. Jesus' disciples seem perplexed why Jesus wouldn't take advantage of this celebrity. In our world today, this would be a great time for Jesus to garner more followers on Twitter or Instagram, capitalizing on this new notoriety. But instead, Jesus goes to a deserted place, away from the fame and notoriety. Doesn't Jesus realize how famous he became overnight? I was reading through a commentary from Bishop Will Willimon on this gospel story, and Bishop Willimon shares a story of what he called a, quote, impudent student in a previous class writing on the chalkboard, will success spoil Jesus Christ? After some initial annoyance at some student's emboldened question, he says this question still haunts him to this day. Will the success Jesus has experienced in our large, expensive churches as an acclaimed cultural icon ultimately be the greatest obstacle the crucified one must overcome? In our world, in our churches today, we think we have this Jesus figured out. We know who Jesus is. We know how to appeal to Jesus. But what if we don't? Bishop Willimon's story still kind of haunts me and left me with more questions about this gospel today. Why did Jesus go out to that deserted place? Why does this story say Jesus cured many, but why not all people? Why does Jesus go from healing to telling his disciples, actually, you know what, instead of any more healing, let's go to the neighboring towns so I can preach the message there also. There's obviously people in need. Why not heal all of them? Why is Jesus trying to preach when people are in need? In this gospel story today, Jesus seems deeply concerned about the crowds because he knows that people will follow anybody, almost anywhere, who give them exactly what they want. I think Jesus went away from healing to a deserted place to pray, to then going to a neighboring town to preach, because there was still much to be said. He is the Messiah, the Son of God, yes, but what does that actually mean? Is the Messiah some form of Santa Claus coming to give us everything that our hearts desire? Maybe Jesus' fame could cause him to stall and soak up all of this success. And Jesus knows how easy it can be for us to feel so important. And to be caught up in the whirlwind of important tasks, impressed by overwhelming need. So in response, Jesus accesses a crucial skill that we often overlook He takes time away. He retreats into a quiet place to discern how he will respond to all the expectations placed on him. Jesus resists being caught up in this kind of mob mentality forming around him. The Gospel of Mark's very careful telling of this story, I think it's intentional. Jesus leaves behind the celebrity and chaos of the previous day to return to where it all began, alone, away from everyone. But why? Why, Jesus? Why not show people the power you have to heal? I mean, at this time early on in the Gospel of Mark, Jesus was trending about as popularly as GameStop has been for the past two weeks. But I think Jesus intentionally creates space with this crowd because he truly knows that people, that we are susceptible to follow almost anybody, anywhere, who gives them exactly what they want. Jesus knows people will follow someone who tells them exactly what they want to hear and what they want to see. Jesus knows people will listen to echo chambers in their lives And this message, it still reigns true for us today. 
We follow political figures, talking heads, whoever it might be. We are still susceptible to follow whoever will give us whatever we want or tell us whatever we want to hear. We are susceptible to following an image of Jesus that makes Jesus into this genie or Santa Claus figure, granting our wishes, giving us what we want. We make Jesus more about ourselves. What Jesus is doing by retreating to a deserted place is intentional. Jesus creates that space between who we think Jesus is and who Jesus actually is. Messiah, Son of God, because we can't fully understand him. Jesus is both human and divine. The story shows us how elusive Jesus is sometimes too, how we must patiently allow him to reveal himself to us rather than who we would have him to be. There's space between us and the identity of Jesus. Renetta Weems, in her book, Listening to God, A Minister's Journey Through Silence and Doubt, wrote, The long silence between intimacies, the endless pause between words, the immeasurable seconds between pulses, the quiet between epiphanies, the listening for God. This is the spiritual journey, learning how to live in the meantime between the last time you heard from God and the next time you hear from God. Honestly, throughout life and throughout different seasons in our lives, we can ask, where is God? Why isn't Jesus healing all people? Right now, we have loved ones sick or dying from COVID. We see violence all around us. We see people suffering economically. We see families, teachers, students struggling with virtual or in-person school. And sometimes, we're just left with a bunch of questions. We're left with a knot in our stomach and heart searching for God. We are left bewildered with who we thought Jesus was We don't like this. We want to hear answers, especially in our faith, not have more questions. And yet, even with all of these questions and uncertainties, today's gospel reminds us that sometimes in order to have Jesus revealed to us, we must be willing to have our perceptions of who Jesus is completely rearranged. We have to receive Jesus on his terms, truly revealed to us in Christ's beautiful fullness rather than our terms. We have to create space for Jesus to reveal who he truly is instead of just making Jesus reflections of ourselves. The gospel today leaves us with some questions in the space between us and Jesus Will you follow Jesus even when you do not always immediately understand him? Are you willing for there to be gaps between what we know of Jesus and what we don't know? Because God's work in creation is never done. God continues to create even if it feels like God can be far away sometimes. Jesus continues to reveal himself to all of creation. So maybe in the long run, as we stumble after Jesus, sometimes seeing for sure, sometimes not knowing what is going on, the point is not to have answers, but to have Jesus. Jesus in all his life-giving presence. And that's better, even better than the answers. Thanks be to God. Amen.
I invite you to join me as we lift up prayers for God's world and God's people. As each petition ends, merciful God, you're invited to respond, hear our prayer. Let us pray. God of the universe, you sit above the circle of the earth, and so we pray for the oceans and mountains, inland water, and the air we breathe. Teach us to honor the earth, which is yours. Merciful God, hear our prayer. Since the beginning of our faith, we have looked to you to gather the outcast, heal the brokenhearted, and bind up their wounds. So we pray for the poor of the world, the sick, and the lonely, especially for those who are sick and dying from COVID, as well as those and their families who have already died from COVID. Merciful God, hear our prayer. God, you build up Jerusalem, and so we pray for our country, for all the countries of the world, and for all the leaders. May we all come to see that your delight is not the strength of weapons and force, but in those who hope in your steadfast love. Merciful God, hear our prayer. We pray for your church here and throughout the world. May we be witnesses of love, compassion, and care in our communities. May we find ways to continue to be your church outside the walls of a sanctuary. Merciful God, hear our prayer. Together now we complete this prayer, praying as Jesus taught us to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Worship is an opportunity for us to give thanks to God for all the many blessings in our lives. Online worship is one way we give thanks to God, and we're glad you're here, and we hope you will mark the I'm here button and let us know you're here. Worship is also an opportunity for us to give back to God from the many blessings God pours into our lives. So we hope you will consider giving your gifts, your tithes, and offerings to the missions and ministries of St. Francis, either through the link on your screen or through the mail. May God bless the giving of our gifts, our tithes, our offerings, so that through the missions and ministries of St. Francis, we will continue to grow the light in our homes, in our communities, and throughout the world. Amen. Friends, receive this blessing. May the power and presence of Jesus Christ be with each and every one of you always. In the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, go in peace. Amen.